Robert Westgarth's work as a lawyer took him from Kiribati Islands to Washington DC. From humble beginnings in Bathurst, he became the managing partner of Cause Chambers Westgarth and later the president of the New South Wales Law Society. An advocate for women in law and a thought leader for the profession, he is here today to talk about leadership. Stuart, what has been one of the most rewarding experiences of your career? I think this year as the Law Society president, I've been able to deal with a few significant issues um, and put some issues on the agenda and have them discussed, progressed and uh, uh, that's been satisfying seeing those issues taken up by others and some progress being made. Um, for example, the advancement of senior women in the profession is such an issue yeah. and also the progress we've made in dealing with the national reform, uh, reform of the legal profession project. So there's satisfaction in seeing something important and playing some influential role in the, in the progress of that issue. Mm. And what has been the greatest lesson of your career so far? You, you um, ask the hardest <laughs> questions. Um, well, I think the greatest lesson actually on reflection is to surround yourself with good people. Mm. People who treat you um, honestly and candidly and prepare to debate issues with you, who uh, uh, are not loyal in an ingratiating sense, but loyal in the true sense of telling you where you're going wrong and giving you proper counsel and guidance. Mm. And the senior staff of the Law Society are uh, exactly like that. that you know, it's really good to have people who aren't afraid to tell you that things should be done by me slightly differently from the way I might otherwise plan to do them. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that's a great lesson. Look, it's the lesson of listening to others, I think. Stuart, you've worked with a number of senior partners throughout your career. Um, can you tell me who was your greatest influence or perhaps inspiration on the way to where you are now? Uh, I was lucky I joined a small firm. There were about six other partners. And I think what I learnt was to pick up the strengths of each of them and learn from each of them. They were, they were each quite different. Mm. So, so none of them was um, uh, responsible for being the sole influence on me, but I, but I do think that small environment, uh, observing and learning from each, was very beneficial. You mentioned my cousin John Westgarth. Well, uh, what I admired about him was that he was a very even-tempered and uh, s solid individual who always thought uh, logically uh, and uh, in a sense unemotionally, I mean in that in the nice sense of the word. Uh, and his writing and style was very economical and, and clear. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't matter if you were a High Court Justice or a little old person down the street, you could understand and have no doubt about the sentences that he'd written. Mm -hmm. How important are people skills in running a law firm? I think they're in incredibly important and indeed vital. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people skills aren't just important in running the law firm, they're also important in dealing with clients and external uh, parties. But in terms of running a law firm, particularly one that has a large number of employees, you really need to have strong interpersonal skills, empathy, organisational skills, and an ability to see things from the other person's perspective. You can apply those principles to the other people you deal with, such as clients and third parties. Mm. What was one of the challenges that you found while being managing partner at Cause Chambers Westgarth? Well, I think it was a time when the partnership culture was moving away from the partnership culture into a more corporate culture. And a partnership culture, by its very nature, involves an attempt to achieve consensus things can't be done effectively unless there was consensus under that type of culture. Mm -hmm. But the firm was moving away from that fairly rapidly. Okay. And, uh, and, but individuals were at different stages of their development in terms of their acceptance of that culture. So one had to be uh, patient, where you had to be willing to persuade. But at the end of the day, to the extent that you'd, once you'd felt that you'd been through a uh, a, a business-like but fair process, mm -hmm. you had to make a decision. So I felt that uh, the hardest part was to make sure that you struck the right balance between consultation and the need to get on and make a fine, final and firm decision. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to tell young lawyers 
who would like to follow in your footsteps? I'd be surprised if anyone did actually, but um, uh, young lawyers need, I think, to try their hand at a variety of things at the early stages of their career because it's, it's not easily um, clear at the beginning what they like, what they enjoy and what they're good at. And so my advice would be to try not to get too pigeonholed mm. or uh, drawn in, in into a line of experience that's too narrow. Give yourself an opportunity to see different things so that you can, and then reflect on what it is that you enjoyed or what you didn't enjoy about those things. So you can get a better understanding of your own likes and your own skills. And then a bit later on, you'll start to make more firm decisions as to the direction of your career. Uh, and along the way, you'll make mistakes, but mm -hmm. mistakes in that, in, in that context are often beneficial because yeah. they, they equal experience. Mm. Sounds like good advice. <laughs> um, and on that note, you've, you were interested in travelling as a younger lawyer, and so you went into maritime law? Yes. Um, and your work took you to London and to the US and you've been to a number of islands as well. Uh, would you say that there is a distinctly Australian style to corporate leadership? Uh, it's often said there is an Australian style that's different, say, from the American or the, or the British or the European style. Um, I suppose in the past the Australian style has been described as a bit more frank and egalitarian than, say, the traditional European or British style. Um, I think some of those stereotypes are breaking down now because of the fact that people travel much more and have much greater exposure to other cultures. Mm. But certainly in the past those stereotypes were strongly believed to be true. Mm. And just one final question, Stuart. Are leaders born or made? Uh, I think they're both. I think some leaders are born in the sense they have a natural inclination. And I think other leaders are made in the sense that circumstances can put them into an environment and the, their, uh, their, uh, the support that they have, mm. their willingness to accept the challenges of those circumstances, um, actually make them into a leader. Mm. Uh, so I think it is a combination. Uh, and uh, I mean, sometimes uh, people with natural born leadership skills don't utilise them very effectively either. So there's a negative side to the born leader. Mm. Thank you, Stuart, for your time and your insight on what is leadership. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.